After back-to-back -back trips at lightweight, the UFC featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky is finally returning to the weight class which he has ruled. At 145, he's only ever looked absolutely dominant, but questions have arisen about the champ's age and the fact he's coming off a knockout loss less than three months ago. On the other side of the coin, you have one of the most confident challengers ever in Ilya Tuporia, and why wouldn't he be confident? He's undefeated and has a dangerous skill set that makes him a nightmare on the feet and on the ground. It's made for a really interesting main event for 298 with two guys at the absolute top of their game. Before it goes down though, we're going to take a look at both these fighters and their styles and break down how they match up. So in today's video, we are going to look at the footwork and movement of Taporia, Volk's stand-up toolkit, what makes Ilya's striking dangerous, the overwhelming speed of Volkanovski, and how these two match up on the ground. It's UFC 298, so let's break it down. So Ilya, obviously, usually going to be the guy going forward. The first thing you'll notice about Ilya, lots of level changes from Ilya. Not just because of the threat of the takedown, but also because he likes to jab to the body. But lots of shifting movements and level changes against Ryan Hall, against everybody. It's a, it's a difference of rhythm, fakes the takedown, but also we'll see in a minute, it helps set up his boxing combinations. Not just that, he's got a real boxing plant style as well, quite heavy on the lead foot. But when he can bounce in, he can bounce out and reset. So Ilya likes to skip forward and he'll be able to bounce backwards and forwards as he skips. But sometimes he'll skip and plant in front of you and then just ready to rip combinations. But when he is advancing forward, he has a very boxing style and he's always taking his head off the center line. And it's usually the opposite, left, right, left, right. And as he goes, he'll show you the uppercuts. He'll flash the jab. So there's a lot of side to side head movement, very much a boxing style. And he, he's happy to, he's so confident in his head movement. He's happy to put himself right in front of you, wait for the shots, slip, and then explode off of it. Let's just take a look right here against Jai Herbert. This forward moving style slips to the outside. Just this constant shift backwards and forwards, level changing, and it helps him get out of danger. He's got great guys and great head movement. Same thing again here, just the side to side movement. All of the level changes come in to blend it all together. Again, just lovely head movement here. Not entering the pocket until he feels comfortable, but he can slip and at a moment's notice explode forward with those jabs. As well as that, we've also got the back step from Ilya, which is a very common boxing technique. It's just a, just a back step, just to drift away, just to create space. And you'll see him back step over and over again against Josh Emmett. Just constantly just giving a little ground. And when he pressures you to the cage, gives him so much more space to back step into as well. And this is the story of the fight. You know, he can just time the back step and then look for his counters as well. And against a guy like Emmett, who was just boxing, there's no weapons on the outside for him to worry about. So he can pressure to boxing range, step back when he's not comfortable, pressure to boxing range, and he can clear that distance because a guy like Josh Emmett's not throwing kicks at the end of combinations. There's no long range weapons to worry about. Again here, beautiful back step, right hand straight to the temple, great accuracy, and also follows up with combinations, which we'll talk about in a minute with Ilya Taporia as well. And again, we'll just take another look here. Lovely little jab in. He also has this shoulder roll that he uses as well. So as he pulls out from shots, he'll turn away and cover with the shoulder. It's the Philly Shell style. You know, when the right hand comes, you roll away from the right hand. Now, obviously, you know, you, people don't want to drop that lead hand, but if you can do it the way that Ilya Taporia does it and Sean Strickland does it, it makes it look beautiful. Time and time again, Josh Emmett's trying to bang this right hand and Ilya's just pulling it, just shoulder rolling away from it, so clean. Here's another great one right here, look at this right hand. Whoop, perfect, perfect roll away from it. And the guy like Josh Emmett's only throwing one punch at a time. That's why they call him the Matador right there. Bringing it on, whew, takes the angle, the ball goes that way and he's back round ready to reset. So Ilya Tapura, lots of forward pressure, lots of skipping, ready to plant, great head movement, and also a great back step as well. It all revolves around boxing though mainly for Ilya and that's his main offensive weapon on the feet. So we talked about these level changes and they will also start to throw these jabs to the body off these level changes. Okay now most of you know Ilya Tapore the jab goes to the body because he's going to eventually bring this right hand over the top. So a jab to the body and then a right hand over the top. But of course he wants to jab to the body, bring your hands down, bring your eye line down and then open up the targets over the top. And we see that time and time again with Ilya. Again here jabs advances into the body, big right hand offsets him right here. So that's Ilya Taporia in terms of his, uh, you know, his advancement, his defensive footwork. We're going to look at his offensive output, his combinations in a second, but let's just jump over to Volkanovski really quickly. Volkanovski, we've broken him down before, but we're going to take a look at something a bit different today. Two of his best weapons that we don't really talk about, and that's his lead hand and his lead leg. 
Okay, now I'm a southpaw, but uh, so I might demonstrate from this side. But his lead hand and his lead leg, so important. They're his feelers, they're his initiation for combinations, they're his distance closes, and they're also his outside weapons as well. I totally, ri totally ripped my jeans, yeah. <laughs> that just split right there, it's fine. So I'm going the right leg, we'll be okay. And they're also his outside weapons as well. Let's have a look what we mean with the lead left hand and lead leg. So right here against Jose Aldo, a guy who's similar to Ilya, and that he's gonna walk forward in a boxing stance and try and time you as you step in. All of these fakes from Alex, all of this lead hand, this up-down movement, the pirouettes, hands constantly come up and down. And also something else Alex has, that lead leg, inside leg kicks. Beautiful range-finding weapon, and these right angles that Alex takes as well. He doesn't just drift sideways and march sideways instead. He takes big steps and takes big, big angles. So if you're right in front and you're trying to line something up and suddenly the guy's over here, well, I've got a turn. And now he's over here, well, I've got a turn. And if you can never settle and Alex never stands in front of you, he's incredibly hard to hit. So a guy like Ilya who wants to see where you are and be able to come forward down the middle, if Alex is gonna keep taking these big steps to the side and creating these big angles, it's gonna be really tough for Ilya. Again, inside leg kick right here, brings up the leg, just showing it to him. Takes that right angle again, another big right step. Steps to the inside of southpaw, gonna change, advance a little to the inside, walk back the other side, step out, and then bang his little inside leg kick as well. Very tricky to deal with on the outside Volkanovski, especially against guys who just box. Let's see the fight with Chad Mendes here. So lead hand play, touches the outside of the hand, pulls it down, spears the jab in. Beautiful work with the lead hand. Lead hand to the body, jab right down the middle. Same thing again here. Left hand, touch the outside of the hand, come in. So he's not always trying to duel the jab down the middle. He's clapping the outside of your hand and then spearing. He's getting you to react. He's showing you one thing and then throwing something else. Same thing again here, touching with the lead hand, inside leg kick, and now blitzes through to the combinations once he actually can get his hands on you. Once he started to break you down and find your timing. Same thing again here, all these fakes, the left hand pumps. Very scary stuff, and that is a left high kick. People think about Alexander Volkanovsky, you can list off a number of traits, but you probably don't think how good his kicking game is, okay? This is the first strike he throws against Jose Aldo, is a left high kick. And there's about three or four other fights I could show you where the first thing he throws is his lead left high kick. Now, we're gonna come back to that a little bit later, because if you know anything about Ilya Tepori and you've done your research, you'll know the only thing he's really been caught with was a good left high kick. So. Alex not only has the left hand and the jab and the inside leg kick off the lead leg, he throws the high kick as well to keep the distance and also to try and land it. So you see against Mendes here, off the back foot against the cage as well. Another cheeky left high kick. Same thing here again, trying to freeze with the movement, fakes the level change with the right hand, steps in, and boom, brings up another little left high kick. And he's not afraid to throw these weapons because he's so good on the ground, of course, as well. But I just wanted to highlight a little bit because it is something that people are probably going to look for, especially if... Alex has seen it work against Ilya before. You can pick the leg up as well, and just by picking it up, you're offering so many different options. You're giving your opponents questions, but just lifting this lead up, it could be anything. It could be him stepping in for a jab. It could be the high kick. It could go inside. It's all off that lead leg. And so he's just twitching and moving the front half of his body. Yes, he comes forward with that back right hand, but it's angles, it's the steps, it's the lead hand. And against a guy like Ilya Toporia, who's gonna stand and box, the best thing Ilya does is counter the backhand, is step back when this right hand comes through. He doesn't often counter jabs and, and things off the lead side, so as much lead stuff Volk can throw at Ilya, he's going to have to get him to react when he normally wouldn't react. He would be waiting for the bigger shots to backhand. He's going to have to react off the lead handwork and off the jab. So let's go back to Ilya Toporia, okay? Because one thing you probably noticed about Ilya is he's very good at stringing together combinations. He doesn't stop after just one or two, or sometimes even three. He'll go for a fourth shot. And not just that, he's really good at initiating offense, waiting for the counter, and then re-countering after they've thrown back, which is not something a lot of guys do. Kind of hard to explain, but I'm gonna show you what I mean. Jabs to the body again, we've talked about this. Bryce steps forward, and Ilya's planted his feet, and he's just gonna wait to unload as soon as he closes that space. Boom, boom. So this goes back to uh, the, the talk about the skipping movement from Ilya and that he might be advancing, but any moment he's ready to just plant and just wait, just will for you to come close enough so he can brawl. And if you don't, then he'll get back to the bounce and everything else. Against Damon Jackson right here, level change, brings the right hand up, right uppercut, left hand, right hand, and then finishes with the left hook to the body as well. And more hooks and more hooks to the body. The body attacks we've seen from Ilya, but this is more, again, about the combination punching. Let's see some more. Against the cage, jabs, exchange the jabs. 
right hand over the top. You think that might have been the eight for the combination, but then Ilya comes back with two more shots as well. You've got the jab, right hand over the top. Most people might be done there. Josh Emmett was done there. Then the left hook, and then on the break, then the right hand as well. So a four piece combination, you might only expect two. It's the chain attacks from Ilya. Slips underneath here, lovely job, brings the left hand up around the side. Left hook, right hand, left hook, and follows him as well. Again, it's these combination punches, these blitzes in these trades, which will be interesting if they start trading together. So Ilya is always ready for the trade, always ready for you to step inside his range where he's already plied his feet and he can just unload combinations and he'll keep throwing as well. He's not a guy that's afraid of the brawl, which is why he extends his combinations for so long. Here's an example of what I mentioned about countering after he's initiated an attack as well. It's about fast twitch muscle. And again, it's about those extended combinations. So Ilya is going to step in, jab, the Mon throws back and throws the right hand. You think Ilya's peeled out here and he's done. Immediately comes back in with the jab, the same right hand, this time pulls it and goes right back on the offensive with his own right hand, then a left hook to the body, and he keeps the pressure on against the cage. Same thing again here. Exchanging the jabs, pulls the right hand, bam, right hand, left hook, right hand again right there. So jab, I've been countered. I'm coming right back with my own combination. It's really good boxing. Same thing again here, they exchange, right hand, steps out, bam, right hand again, pulls the left and he goes right back on the offensive, right hand again, left hand after that, and he's breaking or Josh Emma apart here. So this is why this fight is also pretty interesting for me is because Volk is also really good at that. He's also a guy that will jab, exit, and then re-attack as you're trying to counter him. And the reason Volk's so good at it is because he's so goddamn fast. But let's have a look at some examples where he is doing the same thing as Ilya. Against Mendez right here, showing him all of this, all of the flim flam fakes, the right hand. And again, steps in with the jab, it gets parried, and the right hand over the top. And able to pull out of this pocket as well. So to be able to snipe, enter, exit. That's what Volk is good at. Again here, pressure on the fence against Mendez. He slips the jab, tries to return fire, cuts the angle, a lovely right hand over the top. Again, Volk able to see and find those counter shots in there as well. Getting blitz. Now this is an example where it doesn't work out for him. Alex is for the first time stuck against the fence, doesn't move his feet, tries to trade and loses this exchange right here. This is not the first time we've seen Volkanovski go toe to toe and exchange with someone and get dropped happen against Islam happens here against Chad Mendes which again is why this fight is interesting because if he is going to blitz in you know and Ilya is going to throw the combinations is Alex going to stand there and throw back who's going to get the better of that who's faster is, is Alex going to get put down again in, in the same kind of situation or is he going to be able to roll and exit and then come back on the attack both guys are going to be trying to do the same thing so it's kind of interesting. Again, it's the same thing, fading off the back foot, beautiful eyes for the right hand, and then bam, lovely left hook. And this was right after he got dropped as well. Against Chang Sung Jun here as well, right hand pulls it, right hand left hook as well from Volk. So Volk, same thing again, jab, right hand, Volk comes back, but Volk exits, and he's got a little darting jab as he backs up as well. Very smooth. Fakes the level change, jab comes in, the parry from Volk, one, two. Beautiful combination on the inside. The speed in that exchange, so fast. You watch it in real time, it's like a, it's like not even a thumb click. He's so quick at landing these quick combinations in pockets of space most people couldn't. Same thing again there. Off the jab, right hand, left hook, and he's dropped in with it. Jab, right hand, another right hand, following up constantly. Volk very fast with his combinations. So in the third Max fight, we had a Max Holloway who put a lot of pressure on Volk and was also kind of trying to do a bit what Ilya was trying to do, trying to walk him down with the boxing, slip and throw these counter shots. But Volk was way faster than Max in this third fight. Faster than anyone in the division. Jabs his way in with the two and is able to peel out before Max can even throw these combinations off the slips. Again here, hands low, waiting, waiting. Little level change fake. This time the left hand comes out, but it's a distraction. Peels the left hook around the side. And he exits and Volk knows, man. He knows he's got his number. He knows he's reacting and he knows he's quick enough to get in there. Same thing, grabs the lead hand this time. Jab, peels out. Boom, comes back with the left. Beautiful stuff. So quick. And again, it's about exiting and then coming back in. So again here, Volk steps in, right hand. Max tries to counter, comes with a left hook. Volk level changes, puts a right hand over the top as well. This time he's going to reach. Same thing, jab up the middle, exit. And again, bounces back with that right hand, beautiful shot. And he's peeled off as well for the counter shot. The question is who's quicker? You know, Volk's gonna be dying in, trying to counter those counter shots as they come back, but 
Ilya is not just going to throw that one shot back. He's going to throw in combination. So it creates a whole lot of crazy scenarios. What if Volk steps in, Ilya throws two punches, Volk comes back, steps back into counter again, but Ilya is still going, you know? And Ilya's a different opponent from all these guys Volk's fought who are only going to throw one or two shots back. If Ilya starts putting four or five combinations together, that's how he can catch him. Even if Volk turns up faster on the night, if Ilya can extend his combinations in a safe way, he can tag the faster guy because he's already out and reset. And Ilya is very good at doing that. We talked a bit about the game plan for Max in this one, but he's also kind of doing what Ilya is trying to do. Plant his feet, slip and move. And here's a great example how the accuracy and the speed of Volk again wins through in a situation where Max is trying to move, slip some nice punches, but Volk goes back in, tags two on the chin, even when his head's moving, you know? And Volk's feeling himself in this fight because he feels so much faster than him. Again, a two-piece combination, an uppercut, a left hook, and he's gone again, just firing faster. He's in, he's out, and Max cannot hit him. Same thing here, really. Steps in, Max tries to counter, and Volk's back out. And again, bam, now the right hand. That was a double. You know, he stepped in, Max counted, stepped in, Max counted, and then he lands the right hand. So all of this pressure from Ilya is to do one thing, I and mean, you've seen it in his fights. He wants you against the fence, because then you can't go backwards. And he can throw as many punches as he wants. And he's finished a bunch of guys like this. So Damon Jackson steps in here, fakes jab, rear uppercut. Now this bangs off the chin of Damon, straight into the left hook to the body, which bends him over, and then just a one-two over the top. The speed of his punches, he is so strong, and he hits so hard from short distances. Same thing again here against Jai. Goes, level changes low with the jab, and it's over the top. Just misses the right hand. Oh, Craig, normal person would be done, but Ilya comes back with a lead hook and then another right hand there. Again, so in an instance where jab to the body, right hand, oh, we've missed him. It's okay, I'm safe. He then comes back to the body shot. And again, you're like, oh, he's extended that. That's okay, didn't expect that hook. But then he's got one more over the top. And he wouldn't have knocked Jai out if he didn't throw four punches. You do two, you do three in that situation, you're not getting it. I know for some people who maybe don't watch a ton of MMA or whatever, you feel like four punches in a row isn't a lot. I'm telling you, a four punch combination isn't something that everyone throws. It's scary extending your punches. The more you throw, the better the chance of getting hit. The fact Ilya can do it and be so successful and effective with it is one of the things that makes him really unique and really good. Against Bryce here as well, we see this head movement, this cobra-like movement here, slips, bam, uppercut, left hook, and then a right hand as well, drops him, just so smooth and then uncoils himself when he needs to. Again, Ilya, how's the ground game gonna factor into it? We don't know, but we know Tapuria is very good with his takedowns. Right here, he's in a body lock position against the cage, got the over under, is able to reverse position and using the momentum as well, drives his left shoulder to the fence, steps across with the right leg and then just rotates the hips away on the underhook side to get a beautiful suplex right here. Tons of power and Tapuria loves the ground. He's phenomenal there. We've talked nothing about his striking, but his submission ability is insane. Snaps down with the front headlock, still holding on to it, but now in a different position, rides through and takes it you know, into a finishing spot right here where he's using the knee to pull the, the, uh, the elbow down to get the arm across the neck, still chasing the neck as he now takes top position, as he's still tacking the same neck, now using it to flatten the guy out for about 30 seconds of the same submission, now changes into a guillotine. Zalal does a great job getting out of it, but now he turns it into a mounted guillotine and he's going to just continually chain these submissions as we go from position to position, back to a dash choke. This is the same sequence of submission attempts. We're now on about the fourth different one and he rides it through from every single position right here. He's just, you know, a guy that chains combinations and changes submissions together as well. Bryce Mitchell right here, great stuff. And again, Beautiful pancake, as DC calls it. You can see the strength in the grappling of Ilya just to ragdoll his man. Even here on the, the arm triangle, just drags him to the mat. You know, we know Bryce was a bit sick maybe for this one, as he said, but even so, you talk about the physicality when it comes to the grappling, Ilya is a very strong guy. Maybe as strong as Volk, we don't know, because Volk is also the same. And Volk also has this in his arsenal. Plenty of times in fights when he felt like it's not a good exchange or he wants to, he'll just drive you to the fence and just hold you there. You know, nice start step in. Oh, okay, cool. Boom. We're going to clinch and he'll work from here. He'll get takedowns from here. He'll drain your gas tank from here. Does it to everybody, even against Zombie here, who initiates. He's got the ability to turn. Don't forget, he's also a Greco Roman guy, Volkanovsky. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is part of the game plan. Something Brad Pickett asked me when I asked him about this fight is okay, the question is how good are both guys off their back? Because we know Volkanovsky is super good at getting up from takedowns. He's, he's not been taken down a lot. You've got the one example with Islam when he controlled him on his back. But when have you ever seen Volk flat on his back? 
We haven't really is the answer. We've seen people on his back, but actually both shoulders pinned to the mat. We have never seen it pretty much. Whenever he does get taken down, it's a matter of time. Butt scoop, push on the head, easy peasy. Going to clear this left leg past the knee. As soon as that's out, easy peasy, build the base with the right leg and his back to the feet. He is so good at getting up. So if Ilya does want to commit to these takedowns, can he hold Volk down? I don't know. I, I don't think so personally, but we've seen crazier stuff happen. Same situation here again. Lovely takedown from Chad. Keeps this foot in play. Now, obviously he's given up side control from that and Chad eventually rotates and comes to the back. This is a bad spot for Alex. Again, this, this back control position, but Chad's going to give up a hook because he wants to take mount and Volk just beats him here with the left hand frames. And that is some serious good core strength right there to hip up and beat the man at the same time. So again, physically, they're very similar when it comes to grappling. Ilya's got the submission attempts. Volk's got great submission defense. Ilya's got good takedowns. Volk gets back to the feet. I have no idea how the grappling is going to go, but it's worth talking about briefly. One thing we know, Ilya, the biggest shot he's ever been hit with is that lead head kick from Jai Herbert. That's why I pointed out Volk and his head kicks earlier on, but let's just take a look at it, just for those of you who haven't seen it. Jai throws a straight right right here. Ilya trades with the right hand, and look at this on a dime. Bam! Beautiful left head kick off the straight right. Sends him flying to the canvas. Just something to think about. You know, Volkanovski loves that left head kick. Maybe we'll see something similar. I don't know. But either way, a kicking game is going to be really important when dealing with the boxing of Ilya. And we've talked about that with the lead leg on the inside to the body and also to the head. Another thing with this back step from Ilya, when he does drift backwards, he keeps this lead hand down sometimes. And long guys like Jai were able to connect as he's exiting these pockets in these positions right here. Nice head movement slips. You know, this is the good Cobra-like head movement, but beautiful timing on the knee right here from Jai Herbert as well. So there are holes in these defensive tendencies that, that Ilya has chosen to use. And I'm not going to tell him to change anything. I'm just trying to point them out for you. Again, the right hand when he's doing this back step, you know, it's there available over the top. This is the only takedown he's ever given. Doing this head movement, but he plants too heavy on the lead leg. Bryce level changes, grabs the single, and this is the first takedown he ever gives up. And it's a pretty good takedown for Bryce Mitchell. We have seen Taporia flat on his back in the UFC. And how did he get on? Not great, really, because this is a minute, and then a minute later, he's still on his back. So Bryce Mitchell gets one takedown and was able to hold Ilya Taporia down there. As good as the grappling credentials are of Ilya Taporia, the black belt that he is, Brad Pickett wants to know what happens when he gets put on his back. He wasn't able to do much. Kind of controlled the arms a little, no real submission threats, and he didn't get himself back up. And also, we can't forget, this has happened to Ilya as well. Third round against Zalal, he's super tired, man. He can, he can barely keep his hands up in these exchanges. The, the head movement is a lot slower. He's not throwing back. He's taking these shots. And Yusuf Zalal wasn't able to finish him. But this is a version of Taporia we have seen in a 15-minute fight right here. Look, I mean, he's trying to shake it off, but he can, he can barely keep his hands up, you know. And Volk, he is engineered for 25 minutes. He has that down to a science. He fights at a 25-minute pace. Ilya doesn't really do that and will now have to adjust to that. I'm not saying he can't. He's, a, he's fighting for a world title. I'm sure he can, but it is just something else to think about going into the fight. So yeah, there's a lot of takeaways from that one, really, guys. And I don't think I'm going to make a prediction for this one because, you know, at the same time, it's not really. It's up to you to make your own prediction. I'm just here to break everything down and you can take away from it what you will. I think both guys have got good advantages in different places. Ilya, I think, maybe hits a little harder, but does Volk have the speed advantage? He definitely did the last time we saw him at 145, but obviously all the X factors going into this. The short nose fight against Islam, coming off a knockout, getting older. These are all things people are talking about as part of the narrative of this fight. So we can look at the, the, the footage and the technique, but that's not the only thing to worry about in this one. But you guys let me know how you've got it. I want your predictions down in the chat. Anything I pointed out that you liked, anything you think I missed, let me know as well. And, uh, you know, give us a like if you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more from us, you can hit subscribe as well. But uh, this has been The Breakdown. And yeah, we'll be back with the next pay-per-view.